Hello, I'm Christian Sabados. I'm from Portugal Capital Institute. It's a think tank based in Budapest, uh, Hungary. It's an honor to be here in this really, really beautiful city. And since I'm uh, the first speaker and the organizers told me that uh, my job is to warm you up uh, for the rest of the conference. So I choose uh, this topic, narrative versus facts, which translates to politicians and lies, just to take care of your blood pressure for the rest of the uh, day. Today I'm going to argue that uh, political propaganda creates a virtual political reality in Central and Eastern Europe, and social me media, which uh, was supposed to uh, empower citizens to bring more democracy, failed to do so. And uh, uh, you, you know, uh, I'm a political analyst, and many, many analysts like me agree that the biggest threat to democracy in Central and Eastern Europe right now is the rise of populism. The rise of populism and the rise of populists everywhere in Bulgaria, Romania, Hungary, Slovakia, and Poland, and in the Czech Republic. Um, and uh, I chose this quote from Hannah Arendt. She wrote it uh, uh, 60, years, uh, 60 years ago, uh, which shows that not much changed uh, since then. Um, today I'm going to, to talk about uh, that, uh, that this political, how this political populism can be so successful that, uh, that so many countries, uh, which 20, uh, 25 years ago, uh, after the fall of communism, uh, returned to democracy, now turning back time, and they are building up new political structures similar to the, to the one that they left behind 25 uh, years ago. So, I will give you um, four tools why these uh, political populists are so successful at building up, creating this uh, virtual political reality um, in Central and Eastern Europe. The first one is, uh, is uh, that uh, it is a result of the economic crisis in Central and Eastern Europe. The media uh, was severely hit by, by the crisis. Many media companies uh, went bankrupt or were forced to cut costs, lay off, uh, lay off people, lay off journalists, and of course, the freedom of information, the freedom of press was da damaged. Um, and as a result, the state became a dominant player in the advertising market. So, and uh, the advertising money, the advertising money uh, is now a very effective political weapon in the hands of governments to manipulate media, to influence media. For example, in Hungary, and I will give you many examples from Hungary because Hungary is the most developed illiberal democ democracy within the European Union. So, for example, in Hungary, 90% uh, of all state uh, government uh, advertising money goes to media that, uh, that uh, never criticize the, the government. This is one thing. This, the other thing, is, which is more uh, annoying, is that uh, media companies are so hungry for state money, state advertising money, that a new form of self-censorship appeared. Another example from Hungary. The two main commercial TV channels, with a market share of 30%, decided that they stopped broadcasting political news in the main in the evening news program. Not because of some direct government interve intervention, just because out of fear, that the government will not spend advertising money in those channels. And these channels are not local channels, these are owned by big Western media companies. And they decided to, to use this self-censorship. Okay, uh, the second uh, tool to create this virtual political reality is that in Central and Eastern Europe, in Bulgaria, Romania, Hungary, now in Hungary and in Slovakia, Media companies are owned by oligarchs. These oligarchs have very special business interests. They want government contracts. In exchange, they maintain, sustain these, uh, these uh, media companies, which never make profit in Central and Eastern Europe without state money. So practically, it's a deal between the oligarchs and, and, and the governing parties and the governing powers uh, that, uh, that the businessman gets the government contract, in exchange his media will be very friendly to the, towards the, the, the government. In Hungary, again, 95% of all billboards, outdoor posters, are, are owned by one business person, one man, who used to be the closest ally of the prime minister. So, uh, if you have the weapon of 
advertising money and the friendly oligarchs next to you, it's very easy and convenient to be, uh, to be a populist in Central and Eastern Europe. So if you want to understand the success of, for example, our Prime Minister, Viktor Orban, it's 20% talent, 80% media. Um, and, of course, if you, if you have such, if you have such uh, support behind you, uh, it's very easy to distribute and spread disinformation. Disinformation uh, serves three goals. The first one is to uh, distract public attention from corruption, from bad governance. Between 2010 and 2014, uh, the Hungarian economy contracted. We had a very deep recession. But everywhere on the streets, on billboards, you could see texts, slogans, the, the economy is booming. Uh, so this is how you can use uh, your friendly oligarch. Uh, so the, second, uh, the second reason why, uh, it's good, uh, why, why uh, uh, you, can, you can use this information is, is uh, you can generate fear in the society. A fear of a mystic, mysterious uh, outside enemy. This outside enemy can be Brussels, it can be liberals, it can be gay right activists, it can be uh, George Soros, you name it, you can find it. So the, with this information, you can generate this fear that, 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 that somebody is threatening our country, the country needs de uh, to be defended, and of course, it's the political leader who will defend our, uh, our country. And the third, uh, why this information is important, because populists create a deep cleavage in, inside the society, uh, because um, those who criticize the government those are the, the enemy inside, who are agents of the outside enemy. Like uh, uh, I just read it in, 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 in the Polish newspapers, that the local government, uh, the Polish government started to, to accuse uh, his critics uh, of being uh, foreign agents. This is exactly what's happening right now in Hungary. Last year, an NGO, uh, head of the NGO was arrested. He, uh, her only crime was that she received money from the uh, from, uh, government of Norway. Um, and she was arrested. Pictures of, of her uh, was every, uh, were everywhere in the, in, the, in the media, and she was the enemy inside. And uh, so, it, it's, it, these are, these are the, 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 the things that you can use this information for. And the fourth thing, uh, which helps our uh, Central European populists to keep their power, uh, is the Russian propaganda. Unfortunately, we experience that, uh, that uh, Russia is setting up new sites everywhere in Europe, in Hungary, we, ca we counted five brand new news sites which spread pro-Kremlin propaganda and fake stories, fake news, everywhere in Europe. And the goal of the, of the Kremlin is to destabilize Europe because the destabilized European Union is good for Putin. So, uh, and of course, uh, the closest allies of Putin in this region are our Prime Minister Viktor Orban or Robert Fico in, uh, in uh, Slovakia, the, the, the two most famous populists. Uh, in the region. And even the Polish government is, uh, in, in rhetoric, it's very anti-Russia. The fact that the, the Polish government is against Brussels, again, it destabilizes uh, the whole European Union, the cohesion of the European Union, and it's good for, uh, for, uh, for uh, Russia. So these are the four tools with which uh, our populists can create this virtual political reality. Now, uh, this is a uh, chart which shows you uh, the Facebook penetration. We, everybody expected that social media will be br bring uh, more uh, freedom, uh, free access to information, more accountability of, of democratic institutions, transparency, and so on. Uh, and in Hungary, for example, people uh, escaped from political propaganda, offline media, to, to Facebook, and Facebook became uh, the, the, more, the, the, the last resort of freedom um, uh, in Hungary for a short uh, time because people exchange their own experiences, which was absolutely nothing to do with, uh, which nothing to do with, uh, with, uh, with the government propaganda. So, the fa so Facebook became the source of truth. That's why uh, the Facebook penetration is uh, so high in Hungary. We are completely Facebook addict. Even my father is on Facebook, which is terrible. So, uh, so um, but unfortunately, uh, uh, after a while, we realized that Facebook is not bringing, is not delivering uh, its, its original promise. And there are three reasons. And the first is clickbait. Clickbait is a website or Facebook page which uh, presents uh, 
bombastic titles, bombastic news stories, uh, fake stories, celebrities, uh, miraculous cure, cure uh, medicines, and so on. Uh, these are extremely popular websites and Facebook pages. Their only task is to gather readers, nothing else. That's why they, uh, called, uh, they are called clickbait. An example, uh, in Hungary, the most popular clickbait website has uh, 600,000 Facebook followers. The, most, the number one online news site has 350,000. And the most popular pro-democracy Facebook group has 180,000 followers. So you can compare the influence of clickbaits uh, uh, on democracy. Clickbaits cre are creating virtual reality, the fake reality. It's different from the political one, but it, it, again, it's, it, it's fake. It's not good. So uh, the second uh, reason why Facebook and social media fails to deliver its promise is the so-called echo chamber effect. Researchers revealed that, uh, that uh, people tend to read news selectively. They read news that, uh, that support their preconception, and they neglect those that don't. Um, so they end up receiving similar information, same information, and they end up uh, caught in, in, in an echo chamber. Now, Facebook algorithm, Facebook has a special algorithm which decides what you can read on your timeline on Facebook. Uh, if a news uh, receives many shares and likes, that news is more likely to appear on your own timeline. And since clickbaits, clickbait uh, pages and, and posts receive many likes and many shares, they tend to appear, the more likely to appear on, on your timeline. So practically, uh, Facebook is, uh, is enlarging the echo chamber uh, effect. And if you are lucky and succeed to escape from the clickbaits and the echo chamber effect, and you want to start a conversation on something very important, for example, democracy, uh, then you have to cope with trolls. Trolling, then trolls um, make uh, intellectual debates almost impossible in social media. So, uh, at the end of the day, you are either trapped in a virtual reality created by the political propaganda or uh, the clickbaits, you are trapped in a virtual reality, or you, got, you, uh, you get fed up and uh, you completely disconnect yourself uh, uh, from, from, from political discourse. And this is exactly the goal of the populists. They want you to become either the, the consumer of political propaganda or get frustrated and become passive. So this is a dark and gloomy picture. Uh, I forgot to tell you at the beginning that uh, the organizers told me that uh, my second job is to get you depressed uh, so that uh, other uh, speakers uh, bring you some more positive news. But, but I give you hope, I give you hope. And again, um, it's an example from Hungary, uh, the migration crisis. I don't want to take side in this, uh, in this uh, it's, 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 it's a political issue, I don't want to take side, but uh, I just want to give an example of, uh, of what uh, the social media is supposed to be for. Hungary, last year, 120,000 refugees arrived to the country within two months. The government deliberately decided not to give them food, water, shelter, toilet, basic facilities. So this angry, frustrated, dirty uh, crowd arrived to the railway station of Budapest. The government's purpose was that if the TV channels uh, and the photographers take pictures of, the, of these angry, dirty, uh, bad-looking people, the Hungarians will, will, uh, will, uh, will be scared. And this has exactly happened. The majority of the Hungarians became extremely anti-refugee. Anti so they said that these are, these are dirty gypsies, we don't want them here. So uh, the, 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 government, uh, the government's idea was uh, worked, uh, partly. But uh, another reaction happened, and uh, the better part uh, of Hungary started to organize themselves on Facebook. Within a couple of days, more than 30,000 people uh, gathered uh, on the Facebook page, and 500 volunteers started to help these refugees. 500 volunteers in Hungary, believe me, it's an enormous number. So 500 volunteers worked 70,000 uh, 70, working hours, 3,000 doctor's hours, and they started collecting bottles of water, uh, shoes, um, sandwiches, 
and uh, toothbrushes, even uh, soap bubble blowers for the kids, and one video team uh, was screening uh, Tom and Jerry for 500 hours for, for the Syrian kids uh, at the railway station. So this was, this was the reaction that everybody wanted from, uh, from social media, that social media creates new kind of political activism against even oppressive uh, uh, governments, and it might bring some hope for, uh, for us for the future. Thank you very much.